What we're going to try and do is focus on the, the difficulties that we had um, in order to try and facilitate a conversation between you know, us, us and the community. Hopefully you'll get something out of uh, the, the stuff that we did, the problems that we solved, um, but also if you've got any tips as to how we might kind of improve things in the future, you know, we're, we're very open to that. Um, so this talk um, in particular is to highlight the kind of difficulties with um, the, the project we worked on had some business constraints which, a, which actually um, uh, made a difference to how we were building our content models within Contentful and I think it's quite a, a weird situation uh, that we found ourselves in um, but effectively you know how the business uh, wanted to work was defining how we were going to build content models and I don't think that's really talked about too much. We work for MMT Digital, uh, just very quick plug whilst we're here, so um, MMT Digital um, we're a design and build agency uh, located in the Midlands and in London. Um, we build small to large scale systems um, for various clients, um, Vodafone, Compare the Market, Bacardi, but the, the, the list kind of goes on really. Uh, generally web-based stuff, so you know, as a whole we, we build websites um, effectively. Um, so f for many years we've used uh, CMS systems, so we, we know how CMS systems work pretty well. Um, but we, we've kind of always used these monolith CMS systems where like you get like everything uh, you know, in the box ready so you can use all these features and sell these features to your clients. Um, and over the years we've kind of found that the, the features are never quite what we wanted. Uh, so we end up like building on top and, and then we get locked into this, this big system. So obviously Contentful was uh, really kind of promising for us in, in that respect. This project came up and we decided that this was the perfect kind of candidate for, for us to try a decoupled approach with our, with our content infrastructure. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how we kind of got onto Contentful. Um, uh, yeah, award winning. So uh, <laughs> that's the plug. Um, so moving on to the, the project then. Um, so the project was uh, for a sub-brand of Travis Perkins, so within the kind of uh, building uh, sort of sphere. Um, so quite, quite a big brand, quite a small budget, um, which is kind of a common story really for us, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but um, their current website was extremely dated. Um, they, this is pretty much the most hilarious thing about it, to manage their content uh, when, when we kind of met them for the first time, they were using an A-B testing tool. So um, they would change their content and put the slider 100% over to the B side. Um, so when you load the website, you get the old content and then JavaScript kicks in and you get the new content. So uh, quite ingenious um, from, <laughs> from, from the content editor perspective, but also a terrible experience and just terrible in, in every way, really. Um, so, you know, we decided that we wanted to do something about that. At least the bar was low when, when, when we came in, which is great. Um, so a uh, really quick kind of rundown of sort of what they wanted at a high level. So um, flexible marketing content. Um, we often build marketing pages for clients. Um, and ideally what they want is they want something that they can keep using over you know, months and years. They want a page that they can build and they can reorder it and they can move components in different, in different places and just the content editor can just go nuts and, and make it look good within the constraints of, of, a, of a theme. Um, so that's what we wanted to give them effectively. Uh, there was a products page which was kind of like an e-commerce thing um, but there was no payment, there was no transactional element to it so it was just like I want to hire this thing, you know, here's my request for the, for the hire of that. Um, and then a couple more kind of uh, features in there, so branch locator, that was all CMS managed. Um, and, then a, and then a decoupled search. Um, I kind of gloss over that like it's, like it's nothing. That's a massive thing, but, um, but uh, we're not going to get onto that in this talk, but it was kind of one of those requirements. And I think it's feeding into the, the bigger picture now of how we're having to build websites. Um, you know, lots of kind of open questions there from us. Uh, the team to build this was uh, two devs, um, so a small team, and then some uh, uh, guidance roles that we have at MMT. So, um, architects and infrastructure guys, um, scrum masters, product owners, etc. Um, so we had a scrum team, basically. Um, we had four sprints to do it, um, four two-week sprints, so eight weeks, um, from 
nothing to ready to deploy. Um, and this was our first static site uh, that, we'll, that we'll go into production and our first Contentful site. So um, our two devs, James being one of them um, and another guy called Tom, um, plenty of React experience, so we were fine there, but um, no Contentful experience at all um, and no uh, Gatsby experience in, in this case. So some unknowns, um, but also some, some knowns. Um, so first of all, I apologize for the um, grayscale wires. Um, and they're a little bit boring to look at, but there's kind of branding implications as well. I can't show the mm -hmm. official design, um, <laughs> which kind of comes along with enterprise clients. But um, uh, this is the landing page. Not really much to talk about here. It's a standard marketing landage, landing page. It has content, it has zones, it has heroes, it has signposting. The key thing here is they needed to be able to build this page in any order, however they wanted. So, you know, just move it all around and, and Build these, so we needed to build these components as developers so they could throw it together how they wanted. The product page, as I mentioned earlier, looks pretty much like um, an e-commerce product page, really, um, apart from the fact you're not actually going through and purchasing anything. Um, and you can see we had product information, we had metadata about the product, we had um, kind of deeper you can see here product variations um, and, and kind of deeper specification details. So that was a content modeling. Um, that, that was something we had to really think about on, on how to kind of model this, this data. So we kind of, before we, before we get, got stuck in there, um, and we did just like go and build some stuff first just to kind of get our teeth into Contentful and Gatsby. Um, but we tried to model some of this stuff using uh, entity relationship diagrams. Um, so our, our first tip outwards to, to everyone is to uh, start getting into entity relationship diagrams because they're a really good way of communicating how you're gonna model something um, you know, without having to show code, but still being quite specific. You can see the lines here have certain meanings and stuff, and it's not hard to learn but it's actually really useful to have conversations with clients and developers and all be on, on the same page. Um, so the two things we're gonna talk about modeling here is the, the top row, which is our landing template, which was the first design you saw, and then the bottom row, which is our product page, um, which uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to that um, a little bit later. So just to preface this, so it doesn't sound like super negative, because it's not a negative thing, we're just sharing the, the true difficulties we had. We can talk about all the things that we loved about building with Contentful. Um, so the, uh, the back-end interface is, is amazing. Um, it's uh, really clean, it's really client-friendly. Handing it over to a client is, is a pleasure, um, and that's something we haven't had in the past. Um, usually it's pretty clunky uh, from an experience point of view. Uh, the user position user permissions stuff within Contentful is very, very simple and stripped back. And we found that to be an advantage as opposed to a disadvantage. Generally user permissions stuff within CMS systems is uh, pretty horrible. Um, and even as a dev, you don't quite know who's got permission to do what. Um, it's, Contentful just feels like it's from a development background. It feels like it's ready for developers to get going. You heard, you know, the GraphQL stuff, that's kind of music to developers' ears, really. Um, so we felt that uh, as we were developing, all the API docs just, just kind of played into, into the whole ecosystem for us. Um, support for environments, which is quite a, a new thing within Contentful. Um, this is an absolute necessity for us. We deal with enterprise clients and they, they wouldn't uh, give us another look if we couldn't provide some sort of support for them to have a QA in a staging environment. Even if they don't fully understand what it is, it needs to be there as, as a feature to, to check the box. Um, and also, um, because we're a partner um, with Contentful, we do have some contact with uh, the solutions architects there, but also we did just reach out for support on the general website, you know, just within the kind of intercom chat in the bottom, just like, hey, we're trying to do this thing, can you help us out? And the, the support was like amazing that we received. So really happy with all that stuff and, and loads more. So the challenge is then, um, and for this one, I'm gonna start by handing over to James. 
Okay, so one of the main problems we had was um, trying to develop a content model strategy when we were limited by the amount of content models we had available. So um, the client only actually had the budget for the large contentful space, so we only had 48 to play with. And the main problem being that we found out about this midway through development. So initially, this is a slimmed down version of how we approach the sort of content builder, sort of site builder part of our website. So we're starting off with a template, um, and a template always has a relationship field called blocks. Now, there are a lot of templates which are allowed for blocks, like home template, category template, landing template, but they always have these blocks. And uh, our idea of blocks was that the, the, the client could create and uh, reuse blocks to sort of build out all their pages. And it's effectively a row, but we decided to call it a block instead of a row because if we ever wanted to reuse the blocks, say in a mobile app or anything like that, the content might be vertical, not horizontal. So we went with blocks. And the idea behind a block is that it contains one to many components. Now, we went for this approach for a number of reasons. Um, the, one of them being that we could define exactly which components fit inside a block. We could create blocks that have spots for multiple different components if we want to, which makes it a lot easier for rendering in Gatsby. Um, it means we can apply styles and elements and metadata to, to the block and affect all different components. But the main idea was to just create sort of this abstracted layer. So if we encourage our clients to enter their content in just these small little components, we can reuse them throughout the site. So the client had a contact block with a contact component with the sales team in, and that was used basically everywhere by the time we got to it. And uh, they needed to change the data, and they only had to change it in one area. Um, this is also, we kind of went for this approach as well, because if in the future the client decided to, uh, to build like an Alexa app or a mobile app or something like that, the, we can literally just grab the content we need. It's not weighed down by anything. It hasn't got any of the styling information that's not necessary. It hasn't got any of the metadata. That's all in the block. We can just get down to the information we want and it's completely reusable among systems. There were, however, a few drawbacks to that. So uh, by creating more abstraction, which we thought was great, um, it can cause a lot of confusion for the client. So not only are we encouraging them to think about what the content they're writing, but we're also trying to teach them how to group that together. Um, it also possibly isn't necessary. So if we have a banner, for example, just a full width banner, do we need a block and a component for it? Possibly not. Um, and then generally the main issue was just how many models we're using. So for just a simple component, we've already got a block and a component. If we've got like a list of logos, we've got the block, the component, and then a subcomponent for each logo with the image, text, link. So we can have multiple subcomponents per component. Basically, we're using a lot of content models. So the cull had to come, and uh, unfortunately, we had to get rid of our lovely blocks layer and basically end up with just a single block because we had so many content models, we had to scale back down to 48, and this is kind of what we came up with. Um, of course, a lot of problems with that. So we had to make the blocks generic, which had a massive effect on the code base. So before, we had like a React container for each block, which is great because we can just pull in the components we want and things like that, but now we're suddenly having to use a really weird switch statement, if statements, to just find out what components they're using inside the block and then render them out. Um, it also greatly affected the client. So in our initial model, if, if we had like a hero banner and we only wanted them to be able to add that on the home page, we could specify that. But when a block can have any component, suddenly they can go onto the category page and see that. So we can't limit it and we can't make it easier for them. It also meant that we had lots of content lubbed together. So our initial idea of just spreading out all this, comp all this content into different little components, we then suddenly had to have like success messages, error messages, contact details, all rammed into these big configuration files. 
And uh, although it wasn't too big of a deal for us at the moment with uh, Gatsby and GraphQL, because we can just pick which bits we want, in the future, we would, uh, if we're using just a normal API, we'd have to grab that whole lot of data. It's a lot heavier and uh, not that great. And basically, it just meant that it was unscalable. So we found that being flexible in your content models basically has a direct correlation with the scalability of your applications and how you can reuse your content in different applications. So moving on to the, the product section then. Um, now, the products were quite, quite complex in, uh, in the fact that you had a product itself um, and then quite traditionally really within products, you had a product variant. Um, and that was kind of rooted in the, in the same product, but actually it was, it was specifically a variant of this product. Now, what you would expect to see with that is in the URL, you would see that it was rooted un, under that slug, uh, under that path for that, that product. Um, and actually using this content model we had, we found that quite, quite tricky. You can see here, we've got this kind of root page model, which has what you'd expect for a web page, which is title, slug, some metadata for SEO, some OG tags, etc. cetera. Um, and then the key thing here is we have this template field. And the template field refers to a product in this case. So that's defining that, right, this is, this is a product page. It's gonna have a product on it. Then we have a load of information about the product, um, reaching out to the technical specifications, et cetera. And then the variance field actually reaches back out to a page, which is back to the start again. So you kind of end up with this like circular relationship. Um, and it's important to note that in Contentful, you, you have, everything is linked. It's just a flat like data structure. You don't have like a parent child um, situation going on. Um, so even though that looks a little bit like a parent child thing, it's actually not, it's just like a link. Um, and that for, for content is really, really good and really nice and feels really kind of Mongo-like. Um, but actually for products, we found that to be a, a little bit tricky. Um, we did get there with our, with our um, Gatsby and GraphQL stuff, but um, a kind of a forewarning really, that, that was difficult to achieve in GraphQL. There was lots of kind of like having to trace back to where a kind of a product came from and, and, and develop a slug because uh, if you haven't used Gatsby, Gatsby needs a unique slug for every page that it creates because every page is effectively dynamic, which is then translated into static HTML. So nice to look at as a, uh, a model, but quite difficult to work with. Um, so what, what we kind of, what we've done here, maybe I've skipped over this a little bit, is we've effectively modeled a product within a, within a CMS. And the question is, is that the right thing to do? Um, because there are systems out there to, to model products. You know, you might have a CMS that has e-commerce support, um, some of the monolith CMS systems, um, and they would have more complex product systems. Now, we didn't want to go down that path because obviously we don't want to use a monolith CMS. For bigger clients that have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of products, we might use um, a PIM, a product information management system, um, but our products were less than 2,000, so we decided to go down the CMS route. Um, and I guess for us, it's just like raising that flag. It's, it's not the ideal place to model uh, products. It can be done. Um, and from, an, uh, from the user's perspective of changing, from the editor's perspective of changing products, it's actually quite slick. Uh, but from the developer's perspective, it's not that easy to work with. So the recommendation here would be basically model within a PIM and pull that data into Contentful if you want to, and then just, and decorate that content with whatever extra content you want and just use Contentful for, for the, the content side of things and keep your products in, in a different system. Might be an obvious thing, but you know, it wasn't to us. <laughs> like that's, that's what we did, so, um, so we learned the lesson. Um, yeah, the, the, I, I'll rush through these, I know we're sort of pushed for time, sorry. Um, so yeah, no parent-child relationships within Contentful. Um, it's just worth thinking about, you know, think about the content that you're modeling. Is it actually content or is it, you know, something very specific? It's, if it's a product, it's probably quite specific and it might not be suited. Um, yeah, page slugs we talked about and extra features like prices and taxes and stuff. These would come out of the box with, with a PIM system and you could definitely build it in Contentful. You could definitely make it work um, with extensions uh, or just front-end kind of magic, but it's probably not the right place to be doing it effectively. Um, I think that's it. That's, uh, that's where we're at. Just 21 minutes. Thanks.